Hello, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. With this one, I've tried to consolidate all of the juicy details around the massive March update and run through a recap for those who don't keep up with every bit of news on the game or are just seeking a refresher on how things are being mixed up tomorrow. Tuesday is the launch of Season of the Worthy, which will see the 2.8 update, so here's what you can expect starting tomorrow and throughout the spring season, assuming there are still people working at the Bungie offices by then. To make things easier, I've broken down the info into sections with timestamps in the description if you'd just like to hear about a specific topic. Starting with power, the soft cap will be 950, powerfuls will drop up to 1000, pinnacles will drop up to 1010, and midway through the season, more pinnacle sources will be introduced as the powerful rewards from Strikes, Crucible, and Gambit, and the weekly clan engram are upgraded to pinnacle level rewards. For Trials, the artifact's bonus power will not be disabled for the very first weekend of the mode, but will be disabled for all subsequent weekends until the new artifact power cap system is put in place, which will affect both Trials and Iron Banner. Trials has a new seal, which makes this the second PvP title since September 2018. Trials will be a permanent weekend mode, not just limited to Season 10. It will use connection-based and card state matchmaking, and it is not part of the season pass and will be free to play. But it is 960 recommended power, and there are requirements to unlocking the mode so that you can't just make a new account and jump right in. This upcoming Thursday, the day before Trials releases, Bungie plans on sharing some details on their anti-cheating methods. So for all of you wondering what's going on behind the scenes on that, they'll be sharing details soon. For armor. 11 total armor sets will now be available through Legendary Engrams, including Faction Rally sets. No, you can no longer acquire them if you did not earn them during the first three seasons. All of the Faction Rally ornaments will work on the armor. Legendary, Prime, and Exotic Engrams now all have an improved chance to drop with higher stats. And probably the biggest change coming to armor in this update is that you can now change the elemental affinity on any piece of armor to either of the other two affinity types. It will only cost one upgrade module if the armor has not been upgraded, but if it has, it will cost all of the materials that you used to upgrade the armor with, plus one module. Chances are, if you've upgraded or masterworked a piece though, you are already comfortable with that element. The seasonal mod slot on seasonal armor will be able to use mods from multiple seasons, from the previous season and the season that follows it. So each seasonal slot can now take up to three seasons worth of mods. For abilities, the three one-hit kill abilities, Shoulder Charge, Throwing Knife, and Handheld Supernova have all been tweaked to be less forgiving. You can find the specific details on each of these in one of the This Week at Bungie's in the description. Warlock basic melee range has been extended to have an advantage over other classes, but will still be slightly slower than both Titans and Hunters. Titan barricades will have more health, but certain heavy and special weapons and weapons with anti-barrier will do more damage against them. Fusions and shotguns being the strongest, dealing 60% extra damage to those barricades. Top Tree Stormcaller, Striker Bottom, and Arcstrider Bottom have been tuned down a little bit, while Voidwalker Bottom, Nightstalker Bottom, and Striker Middle have been buffed a bit. We don't have specific changes, but you'll be able to find more on them in Tuesday's patch notes. For exotics, and also for weapon changes, since there's so many of them, and I'd rather not write out every single detail, I'm going to be representing the change to the item in a very easy to consume way by showing a green arrow, which means the item was improved in a notable way, a red arrow, which means the item was tuned to be less dominant over other options, or a dash symbol, which means the item was rebalanced, but you can't really necessarily consider it a buff or a nerf. For some, I will list out the actual changes, but I'd rather just give you a clean overview instead of going through every single line for every single change. For buffs and improvements, we got Kepri Sting, Young Ahamkara Spine, Ashen Wake, Dune Marchers, MK44 Stanicides, Sanguine Alchemy, Ophidian Aspects, and Verity's Brow. On the nerf side of things, we got Orpheus Rigs, Doomfang Pauldrons, although you could technically say that was more of a balance because they fixed a bug, One-Eyed Mask, and Controverse Hold. In the more middle ground of, of balancing, we've got Assassin's Cowl, Frosties, Antaeus Wards, Severance Enclosure, 
Apotheosis Veil, vale, and Stronghold, although we still need more info on that. In a previous update, they talked about reworking that to work with the new sword mechanics. The highlights from these changes were that Orpheus Riggs was hit pretty hard and now gives back only a max of 50% of your super energy. Sanguine Alchemy saw a complete rework, now allowing you to pause the countdown on the timer of your rift ability by getting kills in the rift and extending the timer. Dune Marcher's radius of the static charge was increased from just 12 to 20 meters. One-Eyed Mask finally got the nerf it deserved. Its tracking has been removed. Now it simply highlights targets instead, which means once they go behind cover, you lose that visual indicator. One-Eyed Mask's damage bonus was also removed, but its overshield was returned. However, it's only gonna last six seconds down from eight. So no more tracking, no more damage bonus, but a six second overshield. On the weapon side of things, Izanagi's Burden's animation speed of the Honed Edge Reload, aka when you load in four bullets at once, is no longer affected by the reload stat, and its perk outlaw has been replaced by no distractions. While this will knock the weapon down a peg in terms of DPS, this really doesn't fundamentally change the weapon all that much and it will still be top tier in a variety of endgame activities. One thing that won't be as effective anymore is Legendary Snipers. They were nerfed back to the pre-Shadowkeep values for some ridiculous reason. Grenade Launchers were brought down a notch with their damage. Lord of Wolves, Last Word, Legendary Shotguns, and Legendary Fusions were all tuned to be less forgiving and a little less effective at longer ranges. Auto Rifles got a small bump in damage across both PvE and PvP, and Swords got a complete rework they now use ammo for light attacks, which can infinitely combo, and energy for heavy attacks and guarding. Energy recharges by itself, but you'll still need to have at least one ammo to activate the sword's energy abilities. For new seasonal content, the Season of the Worthy roadmap you see here has things that were purposely left off because many players, myself included, said it spoiled way too much about the upcoming content. I think it's better for everyone if these secrets are left off, if the quests are just a surprise, and while data mining will always be a thing, it's definitely easier to avoid than an official roadmap. So there is more in the season than presented on here, for example, an exotic quest. I have a hunch that there will be some kind of secret mission this season. Maybe I'll finally get that secret quest mission on the Almighty that I've been dreaming of. Seraph Bunkers and Legendary Lost Sectors are actually two separate activities, something that wasn't really made clear initially on the roadmap. And Grandmaster Nightfalls are a new Nightfall difficulty, and there's also a new PvE seal and title. The Destiny 1 maps Anomaly, Cauldron, and Exodus Blue have been reprised and will be available to everyone for free. The exotic shotgun, Fourth Horseman, returns from Destiny 1. Here's the Season Pass armor for Season 10. Here's the paid sets for Eververse in Season 10. Here's the Trials armor for Season 10. This is of course the original Destiny 1 armor, except when you go flawless for the week, the armor actually glows. And some miscellaneous changes include an improvement to frame rates all across the game. The new light experience will be more organized with a new quest tab redesign. Character subclasses with ranged melee abilities will now count towards melee kill bounties and triumphs. The fastidious Miser Triumph now has apparently been officially fixed, we'll see about that. Tower travel loading times will go back to normal, and Bright Engrams can no longer be purchased from the store. In their place will be a daily rotating stock of discounted silver items. And this about does it for the major points of the update. Aside from some more in-depth explanations and actual numbers, this is most of what you'll be seeing tomorrow in the patch notes and live in the game. If I did a good job at catching you up to speed, please help me out by dropping a like and make sure to click the bell if you subscribe or if you're already subscribed. It's the only way to guarantee you'll see my next video when it goes live. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see some of you out there during the next season.